Capital R Romantic by Stars in a Jam Jar on AU3. Chapter 6, Episode 6, Friday. Izuku wasn't quite sure what time it was, but considering he'd just woken from a doze of indeterminate length, and it'd been Thursday when he'd closed his eyes, he decided to deem the day Friday, or night, rather. Togoyami slumbered peacefully across from him, with his little bat plushie tucked against his neck. Izuku couldn't quite remember where it had come from, but it had appeared sometime between touchdown and settling into the hotel room on Sunday, and it had sat sparklingly eyed and smiling cutely right on the nightstand to the clock until bedtime each day. Upon it disappeared in Tokoyami's arm beneath the comforter. Izuku envied him just a little, since despite not being nearly as much of a snuggle bug as Todoroki, he could really go for something to hold on to to get back to sleep. He would use Shinso like he had the last two nights, except, either way, it was definitely past curfew by now, and he'd blissed through his homework before and during dinner in an effort to shove down the inky ball of possessive feelings that had formed in his stomach on the bus ride back to the hotel before dinner. Izuku still felt pretty guilty about his newfound possessiveness over Shinso. After all, the two of them enjoyed one another's company. It wasn't like this was a new development. The only new thing was that now Izuku knew Kaminari had a crush on Shinso, and wasn't in any way serious about said crush. Really, it shouldn't be as big as a deal as it was. So why did the thought of them being together make Izuku want to shove them apart and keep Shinso condoned off from anyone he deemed not right? He looked at Takoyami's plushie for answers, but it gave him its usual smile, its purple glittery eyes glinting from beneath Takoyami's feathers. Izuku ran a hand through his hair and decided he might as well look over that journalist assignment or check on his phone or something, anything to distract from the grabby, ugly feeling, wanting to hold onto Shinso and refuse to hand him over to anyone. He very carefully and quietly lifted the covers off himself and set his feet down on the carpet. Standing up and grabbing his phone from the nightstand, he tiptoed his way over to the outlet where his charger had found its way home and plugged it in. It lit up, and the blue light assured his retinals. Before he could think to close them in precaution, his eyelids squinted close a few times as his eyes adjusted. Once he was no longer being actively blinded, Izuku opened his phone and noticed he had a few missing texts from Ida. Ida Kun. You seemed intent on doing schoolwork during dinner, so I tried not to pester you then, but I wanted to ask if you knew anything whatsoever about proper dating etiquette. Izuku smiled a little to himself. Ida and Todoroki had taken to each other pretty well since the bus ride from Dallas, and Izuku couldn't be happier about it. It occurred to him then that it was pretty hypocritical of him to be so possessive of Shinso, while enthusiastically agreeing with Uraraka that Ida and Todoroki made a cute couple. He made the executive decision to further examinate that peculiar moment after he berratedly tried his best at helping Ida finding his footing. Me. I can't say I have any practice, but my mom told me that dates are just like spending time with someone on any other day, except dates are for looking for more ways to be intimate. So as long as you act like you act if you and Todoroki were alone together any other day, you should be fine. Izuku stared absently at the screen a few seconds before closing out of the app. He would have segued into thinking more about his whole Shinso conundrum, but one of those stagnant moments calmed him. The kind that leaves a person staring into space not knowing for sure if they even have anything to do, let alone if they have the energy or attention span to do it. He remembered the conversation he had with Tokoyami on Monday, where Tokoyami had mentioned Izuku's schedule buddy breaking into the dorm rooms. He suspected the true motives for her actions had been boredom, but he couldn't go breaking the rules just because he was bored. That wasn't exactly something for an expiring number one hero to be doing. Shinso started shifting around, and Izuku didn't have anything to quiet but his breathing, so quiet his breathing he did. His eyes stayed trained on Shinso, 
as his shifting turned slightly more fitful. Then it slowed down, and Shinzo stilled again. Izuka took a breath and shifted a little in a spot in the corner. He immediately regretted this because Shinzo's head popped up and his gaze swiveled around the room, landing smack dab on Izuku in the shorter order. The two of them just kind of stared at one another for a while. Don't tell me insomnia is contagious, Shinzo said dryly. Izuku had to stifle a giggle that bubbled up in his throat, so the only evidence of his laughter was his shoulders bobbing and the squinched up smile all over his face. Maybe? He replied quietly around the mirth. Damn, I guess we gotta quarantine ourselves. Shinzo sat up fully. Can't have Tokoyami and Ojiro catching a two. Where? In the bathroom? Maybe, but that's a little too cramped. Itoshi wasn't quite sure if this was a dream or not, but considering his dreams were rare and never nearly this vivid or realistic, he had to assume it was real. He was honestly just trying to keep the current energy up. Being around Midoriya and keeping his head on straight was easy right now for some reason, and he was determined to maintain both his composure and the moment. Whatever shall we do then? Hitoshi shrugged, but an idea hit him mid-motion, and it gave Midoriya a conspiratorial smirk. I suppose the pool would be abandoned at this time of night. Seems like a good option. What? Shinzo, we can't do that. Izuku hissed, his mirthful smile being replaced with a look that said, You're not actually serious, are you? Hitoshi, being a constructural soul, raised an eyebrow and said, I mean, last time I checked, the elevator still worked, and so do my legs. But we can't just... I mean, for one, Aizawa would be furious. Aizawa isn't here. Shinzo held up a finger to punctuate the statement. Yeah, but present Mike is, and he will obviously tell Aizawa. Is present Mike awake, though? Well, probably not. It's like 12, but... Then what's stopping us? I, uh, I mean, wouldn't it be wrong? Would it, though? Uh, I mean, the rules is there to keep us safe. How much trouble could we possibly get in a hotel pool? A lot. You have no idea how easy it is for trouble to just happen. Like, what if you drown? I think I'm a better swimmer than that. And you wouldn't let that happen. Well, yeah, but... And if some third-party trouble finds us, you have your peripheral license, and I have plenty of physical training. Yeah... Besides, you swinked out right after dinner and missed the time to go down there while the sun was still out. Why not make up for lost time? Shinso had him there. All things considered, there were worse ways to breaking the rules. And besides, it wasn't like they were leaving the hotel. They were allowed to go downstairs for midnight stacks and stay in the dorms. This wasn't technically too different. All right. But if we get in trouble, it was your idea. You say that like I was about to let you take credit for such a brilliant idea. Izuka smiled and rolled his eyes, ever so quietly making his way to a suitcase to dig out his swim trunks, as Shinso did the same. After leaving the bathroom to let Midoriya change, Itoshi wondered if this had been a good idea. Not the breaking curfew. That was a no-brainer but the whole secret away to the pool with his crush in the middle of the night. He didn't usually do stuff like this on the first week, but he couldn't really help that now. This crush business was so much easier when he had the time and space to get through all his thoughts and feelings organized and boxed up so he could open and close things at will. Still, by now, he had figured out that these feelings weren't about to go away anytime soon, so he might as well throw caution to the wind for the night. Izuku made sure to double-check that they had a room key before exiting, and Shinso took care of leaving quietly as possible. Izuku couldn't help marvel at the expertise Shinso moved with. He was like a ninja, or Aizawa-sensei. Not that those two things were mutually exclusive, and Shinso was basically Aizawa's up-and-handy, the prospect of being a ninja for a few minutes 
Rada giggly smiled to his face as he trailed behind Shinzo, mimicking the way he walked, and wondering if that counted as a dorky thing to do. It was definitely dorky. Still, it was exciting, and it was only more so with each step further from the navy-toed hotel room down the warmly lit hallway past the rest of their classmates on the floor. Once they got in the elevator, Hitoshi hit the first floor button. When the door closed, and they started moving down, he looked over to Midoriya, who looked back with a huge grin on his face. The look in his eyes was slightly on the wild side, and his smile was bursting at the seams with sun manic energy. Hitoshi couldn't help but mirror it in his own, more reserved way. The elevator let out a cheerful ding as the door opened, and the boy scurried out, making a beeline along the chilly alarium for the shifting glass doors that led to the vacant back patio that protected the fence in the pool. The humid heat of the night wrapped around them as Izuku hurriedly swiped the key card in the gate lock and ushered Shinso in quickly before closing it behind them and setting the card down on the closest crystalline poolside table. He was buzzing, high on deficiency and secrecy, breathing in the chlorine and rebellion. He looked to Shinso, expectedly. Midoriya's wild, excited energy was even more cautious now than it had been not 30 seconds ago. And Itoshi smiled wide before tossing his shirt aside and taking a run start into the glowing deep end. The water set off, briskling starburst across his skin as it washed away the warm human night. The moment to surface, he heard Midoriya splashing down and got promptly peddled with the displaced water. His partner in crime for the night sliced a yard or so away from him, and he tucked a soaking turf of hair behind one ear before opening his eyes and turning to Itoshi with a soft, breathless smile on his face. They stayed like that for a while, and Itoshi made sure to savor the moment. Then he twisted up his best evil grin and swung his arms out in a huge splash aimed right at Midoriya. Izuku squealed and held up his arms, but it did promotely nothing to help. He was thoroughly peddled with the chloride water, and in an instant, it took him to recover. Shinso had disappeared beneath the water. Decidedly, unsplashable. Oh no, you don't! Izuku shouted, swimming after Shinso's quickly retreating form towards the shallow end. The pool lights lit the edges of the body of water and made him look unreal. Almost like a water spirit or a neon painting even though paintings couldn't actually be neon. When Itoshi resurfaced in an area where he could stand and his shoulders sort of breached the water, he was immediately assaulted by a tidal wave of pool water. Ugh! He smacked up in a series of small splashes in response, but Midoriya was more powerful, and Itoshi had to retreat. Pretty soon, they were in the four-foot area, and Midoriya was cornering him against the wall that marked said footage. All right, all right, I surrender. Hitoshi yelled out over the water once his back hit the concrete. It took Midori a second, but he quickly chilled out with the aquatic warfare. Good call. The triumphant smile on his face made Hitoshi simultaneously melt and indignant. Well, since you won, what should we do now? Izuku blinked, and his face scrunched in a thoughtful pout. What else could they do? Marco Polo didn't really strike his fancy at the moment. They already jumped in, and they just wrapped up a splash fight. So presumably, the only thing left to do was... We could just sort of chill out here. When Izuku refocused his eyes on Shinzo, he noticed something about his expression. It was soft and almost odd, and it only lasted a fraction of a second. But Izuku knew what he'd seen. Shinso schooled his features and stared off the general direction of the deep end, which was sensible since the two of them were merely pretty close to the four-foot water. That is a brilliant idea, he said with an easy smile. Izuku immediately smiled back. Shinso looked like he was meant to be cast in the moody night light surrounding the two of them, and Izuku couldn't help but be a little hammered. Shinso broke his gaze away to push off into a back float, 
and Izuku followed suit. It was nice, staring up at the black sky and letting the water desiccate the sounds that reached his ears. The light pollution floated hazily hues across the sky, and wherever the moon was, it wasn't in Izuku's field of vision. He thought about how many more stars the beach had when a small blinking set of lights floated across the starless canvas. He hadn't seen many planes from the beach, but in San Antonio, you couldn't go a day without seeing or hearing two or three. He wondered how people got used to it, or why Class 1A had to touch down in Dallas Airport if San Antonio had its own airport right in the city. Though, he supposed, Ida and Todoroki wouldn't have found the occasion to try and date one another if it weren't for the bus right here from Dallas. And if they hadn't started dating, Izuku wouldn't have started thinking about whether or not he wanted to be someone's boyfriend, which meant he would have never figured out Shinzo was a capital R romantic, which meant he wouldn't have started getting all squashy at the prospect of Kaminari making a move on Shinzo. Izuku sighed and dove under the water in an effort to distance himself from the ugly feelings and remain here, where he had Shinzo all to himself and they could share the night in the pool and the airplanes without anything muddling the moment. When he surfaced again, he looked around and found Shinzo propelling himself aimlessly around the deep end. Kamanari had said he had a rebellious air around him, and he'd been entirely right. They wouldn't be in the pool if Shinzo didn't have a rebellious nature, and everyone had always known it regardless. Still, here and now, he looked less like a rebellious teen and more like something unreal and irreplaceable. Kaminari had likened Shinzo's rebellion energy to Kachan's entire deal, but for the life of him, Izuku couldn't see the two as similar at all. Izuku couldn't really blame Kaminari for not knowing what he was talking about. He didn't know Kachan like Izuku did, and he didn't know Shinzo Hitoshi the way Izuku did either. Izuku felt a little guilty for thinking that, as he made his way to the side of the pool and sat down with his feet in the water close to where Shinzo was floating. Still, as Izuku admired the way he was drifting through the water like nothing in the universe could interrupt him, and he had all the time in the world, he felt very vindictive with the knowledge that he was the only one who got to see this, the only one who knew how peaceful and pretty Shinzo looked and no one else who mattered at the moment understood precisely how beautiful this capital R romantic was. Shinzo floated closer, and finally noticed Izuku sitting there. Izuku's face turned hot, and he glanced away a moment before replacing the dreamy look he'd been sporting with a friendly smile. Hitoshi felt warmth spread out from his chest, and it was hard to describe how surreal it is to feel like your heart is floating while in the middle of physically floating. Majoria was unbelievably easy to read, but Itoshi didn't know if he should believe his eyes. Had he really been looking at Itoshi like that, in that soft, dreamy, admiring way that made him weak? Had he just imagined that? Was it a trick of the light? Itoshi reorientated himself and swam up to lean against the poolside, looking up at Midoriya. The water droplets scattered across his skin like a second set of sparkly freckles, his wet, evergreen curls, tighter and rounder in the response to the water, shimmered in the light. Meanwhile, his emerald eyes became turquoise when reflecting the blue water. Itoshi was glad he was alert enough to keep his expression in check, because he doubted he'd be able to keep his growing adoration down if he wasn't. Hi there. Isika felt like the consistent smiling might get a little old, but he couldn't help the way the corner of his mouth tugged further upwards to make his grin a bit more lopsided. Hey, hey, Shinzo replied, wily. Isika giggled, quietly, just a moment, and leaned forward, resting his arms on his thigh. He almost forgot just how long Shinzo's hair was, but the way the fine strands spread flesh against his wet skin just barely simmed his shoulders was, strangely, hypnotic. Izuku had to pull his eyes back to Shinzo's face. 
That was the same easy smile from Monday. It made Izuku so happy to see it directed at him. You know something? What? Shinzo raised an eyebrow. You look really pretty like this. It wasn't as creative as the time Shinzo had called him a pastel ball of lightning and smiles, but Izuku still thought it was important, he knew, because, judging by the blindsided look on his face, he clearly had no clue. Hitoshi had never truly understood the phrase, hit me like a ton of bricks, until this moment. Midoriya had just... He really said that. Something jittery and radiant oiled in Hitoshi's stomach. He wasn't sure how to function right now. Izuku expected Shinso to bounce back, but he just sort of stayed like that, kind of catonic. Izuku furled his brows, and his eyes widened in mild worry. Um, are you all right? Did I say something wrong? No. Shinso shook his head, though it looked more like he was trying to clear it than gesturing in tandem with words. I just didn't expect it. Has no one called you pretty before? I mean, no, but that's besides the point. You're sure you're all right? I know it bothers Sue's when I use her full name, so... I figured you might have a hang-up about being called pretty or something. No. No, it's entirely different. Hitoshi really wished he had phrased that sentence differently, because Midoriya immediately responded with, What is it then? Hitoshi had two, maybe three options. Tell the truth, try coming up with a convincing lie, or disappear beneath the surface of the water and swim to the opposite side of the pool as fast as possible. The third option seemed like the worst one, so he decided not to do that. That left the first two options. And that curled ball in his stomach yanked and tugged and pushed at his throat to just come out and give Midoriya the truth. But how could he give himself away like that after less than a week? He had gone through this whole crush thing before. Why was it so much harder this time? He couldn't be so careless with his heart like that. Shinzo's expression was apprehensive, and he seemed lost in thought. There were other, softer things mingling in there, but Izuku couldn't really identify them nearly as easy. Izuku wished more than anything to have Shinzo smiling at him again. He carefully reached out and tugged a stray of hand behind Shinzo's ear. It looked pringly at the bottom of the blue lights, and looked almost of the color just around his roots, at the yellowish lights from the other light sources. Shinzo's eyes darted up to him, and Izuku could see the stock of fear. Not the desperation virtual kind, or the weak, snimmering kind. It was the kind of fear you felt when you were about to do something that you thought could go horribly, horribly wrong. And it made Izuku's heart hurt. It's okay. Izuku smiled softly at him, moving his hands to loosely cup Shinzo's jaw. You can tell me. It was almost like he stopped breathing. He was looking up at Izuku like a deer in headlights. Izuku gently rubbing his thumb over Shinzo's cheek. He blinked and pulled away in a shuddery breath. Itoshi felt like all his insides were nodding and mushing and blending together as he tried his hardest to keep it together. Keep Midoriya at a distance. He needed time. He couldn't just give himself to this boy. He had to wait. He should wait. Izuku leaned just a millimeter closer, wanting, needing to know. He knew it was obvious just how much he wanted Shinzo to tell him the truth. But of course, he would want to know the truth. Still, he didn't know if Shinzo would retreat from him. He wanted more than anything to be closer. Even half the truth would suffice. Just one more millimeter. Izuku just wanted more. Hitoshi's voice wobbled, and he felt like he was speaking around a swollen throat. But when he let out his breath, he couldn't stop himself from saying, I think I love you. The world stopped. Izuku found himself unable to speak. He was so flabbergasted. More than that, though, he was happy. So, so strangely happy. To the point where once everything over the course of the week clicked, 
He honestly and truly wanted to die thinking how unbelievably dense he's been. He should have figured it out when he got jealous over Kaminari making Shinzo laugh, or when he noticed Shinzo strangely not looking at him directly, when he'd gotten all flustered and captivated seeing Shinzo working on the lip-singing project, or when Shinzo had been losing sleep and being silted, when he'd been unable to resist wrapping himself around Shinzo's arm a second night in a row despite not having any nightmares, it was not his fault Shinzo had the perfect ratio of squishy and sturdy for cuddling. Or even way back on Monday when Kaminari himself had thought Izuku had a crush on Shinzo. The boy had even gone and taken Izuku out here alone. How had Izuku not noticed this? Shinzo, I think I might actually be an idiot. What? Yeah, um, so... I don't want to leave it ambiguous or anything because that usually does not go well. He thought back to the first time he ever actually told Katsuki how he felt about him and decided he did not want that kind of shit happening again, especially not in a romantic context with Shinzo. Shinzo deserved to be treated gently. I think I like you too. Love is kind of a strong word, but I, I think you're great. I always kind of thought you were great, but but it wasn't a different great before. I, um... Izuku realized he was still cradling Shinzo's cheek in his hand and started blushing. You're just someone who's always had my attention for a while. Not, like, in a romantic way. Before. But, I mean, like I said, I'm an idiot. And I... I've been getting to see more of you. And that... That sort of made me want to see more? Then, then the first more. And, okay, I'm starting to get way too grabbled. Um, Hitoshi had to remember to breathe. Every single atom in his body was vibrating. This couldn't be happening. This couldn't possibly be happening. You mean that? Izuku jubbled his words, righted themselves nearly instant at the softness of that question. He was not about to let Shinzo think he was being wishy-washy or has-hearted about this. Like, yes, he had only put the pieces together eight seconds ago, but they had always been there. Of course I mean it. I'd never lie to my boyfriend like that. Hitoshi was taken aback for a moment, and actually leaned backwards just a bit. Not enough to slip out of Midoriya's hand, though. He was not about to let that happen. I... that... that is sudden. Ah, sorry, I I guess I just sort of assumed, since, you know, we're both on the same page about it, we were, you know, boyfriends? Isuka said the word more softly this time. That, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Damn, I've been agonizing over this all week, and then you go and call me your boyfriend ten seconds after I confess. Izuka grinned wider and shrugged. I didn't want to leave it to a chance. I'm super lucky you liked me in the first place. The hell do you mean you're lucky? You're the actual son, and you're telling me you're lucky I'm your boyfriend? What? You, you can't just go saying something like that and not understand how, like, you literally just said I was a son. How can someone not feel lucky to have a boyfriend who says such sweet things like that? You act like I don't say things that everyone already knows. What are you talking about? Are you honestly telling me you don't know how majestic and warm you are all the goddamn time? No, unless you count trouble, because I'm absolutely a magnet for that. Guess that explains why I'm your boyfriend, huh? Izuku blinked at Shinzo a moment before he bursted out laughing, his hand falling to Shinzo's shoulder. Shinzo let out one of his low, quiet little chuckles. The next few moments, they were just steady streams of bright laughter from the two of them. Oh, I generally thought it was going to be one of those where, like, we get absolutely no payoff, where they get together at the very fucking end, and then the fanfic ends. Star in a jam jar. Nice. I like this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're feeding us. Oh my god, you're giving us freedom. Uh, I want to talk about that. That scene was super fucking cute, and, uh, that was, that was too cute. That was- Fuck! Fuck! Also, Izuku being, like, my boyfriend immediately after- uh, I feel you, Izuku. I used to process things that way. Like, if you confessed to 
someone and they confess back or like oh yeah i like you i reciprocate your feelings old me was like okay if we like each other then we must be on the same page of you know being dating because that's what it means right i like you you like me therefore we date right therefore we skip that whole oh be my boyfriend thing because like you confessing to me and me confessing back is the initiative of us dating right that's always what went in my mind right right and so with my second significant other because that's how it happened with my first significant other uh he told me that he liked me i told him that i liked him back right and then we just started dating from that point onwards there was no do you want to be my boyfriend be my boyfriend no 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 that was none of that right so when i went into my second relationship right for a week I thought we were dating. We weren't dating. And here's the thing. He confessed to me. And then I was like, okay, we're dating. And then he started flirting with this other person, right? And I'm like, is this cheat? Am I being cheated on again? What? And, you know, turns out it wasn't because, you know, man's wasn't dating me in his eyes. And then we started dating and then he cheated on me. God, I should have never gotten into a relationship with that guy. Fucking bullshit. Yo, I'll learn from my mistakes. But that was such a sweet episode. Episode chapter. Fuck. Uh, I could say episode now. No, I could say episode now. That was such a sweet episode. Oh, that was so fuck. That was sweet as fuck. Oh my God. I want a capital R romantic. I want a capital R romantic. I don't want to be the capital R romantic of the relationship. I want to be the one who's getting romance. I don't want to be the romantic one. But unfortunately. Oh, what was that one TikTok trend? Um, made to be the romantic, born to be the romantic, the romanced. Or what was it? Something like that. I was uh, forced to be romantic, born to be the one being romanced. Ugh. Unfortunately, I'm made to be the romantic one. There has not been a single relationship where the other person has reciprocated in my romantic gestures. The most romantic thing I'm going to get for them is... Oh my god, I've never been romanced. <gasps> oh my god, like, obviously the typical, like, oh, you're so sweet, sweet little words of, you know, affirmation and stuff like that, but, like, romantic gestures like the ones I do, no. In almost all my relationships, I've had at least one, like, big romantic gesture, right? Something that made it us, our thing, us. But no one has done it back to me. Oh my god. Is this what I get? Wait, Tyler? No, we, we didn't date enough for that one to form. Oh, I had a gesture for them, but... Oh my god! That is so sad. Okay, whatever. This fanfic is making me happy. I got a little worried there towards the end because I'm like, oh no. Oh no. But luckily, luckily, it all reeled back and it all came nice and sweet and nice. Ugh, the next chapter, I wonder, are they gonna, like, are they gonna go on a date? Are they gonna tell everyone? Also... Ida and Todoroki, that is a ship that I've never heard before. I uh, know, that's a lie. I've heard about it before in the past. I forgot about that one fanfic where they were like a side couple. It's just one of those ships that don't appear as much, as often, you know? Um, but yeah, anyways, as always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Ooh, link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content and thank you so much for watching.